the new Land Rover Defender has a mountain to climb. Yeah, a real mountain, of course, because awesome off-road ability is an absolute necessity. But also a metaphorical mountain. It's got to replace the old one. A vehicle that was very widely adored, for the exact same reasons it was almost impossible to justify buying. It was basically a tool. Its ability to survive harsh and brutal conditions meant it was, frankly, itself far too harsh and brutal to be taken seriously as an everyday vehicle for most people. So the new one has to be as capable off-road as the old one. And it has to evoke the old one's heritage, which is why it looks the way it does. Those two things were probably quite difficult, but if anyone could succeed, Land Rover's engineers and designers would. Beyond that are two much harder questions. The ones that are the gateway to it being adored like the old one was. If it drives well and is comfy, will it get accused of blandness? And if it's smart and sophisticated, will it have abandoned the customers who made its heritage so authentic, the rescue services, the utilities, the true adventurers? The exterior design is, we think, masterful. It invokes the old one yet it's completely modern. The boxiness is just right for a hardcore 4x4 SUV. It doesn't only eke out the maximum carrying space, it also helps when you're driving between obstacles because you know where the bodywork begins and ends. The short overhangs help off-road with impressive approach and departure angles, 38 and 40 degrees respectively for the 110. But it's also subtly curved, not flat-sided. Flat panels look makeshift and go wavy. The new Defender's curves look smart and solid. Who'd have thought that little panel that breaks up the rear windows would be so controversial, though? The bodywork is structural, the chassis being an all-new aluminium monocoque rather than the old ladder on frame construction. The whole shell is immensely strong. So's the suspension it rides on. It shares principles with the discoveries, but few parts. Almost everything is tougher. The Defender 110 has air suspension a standard too, you can have coil springs on lower spec 90s, which adds to the off-road ground clearance and helps with the mega wading ability of 900mm. Oh, and if you're less fussed about heading off-road and just fancy something silly before we all end up driving EVs, Land Rover has also caved to public pressure and stuck its trusty supercharged 5.0 liter V8 in both the 90 and the 110. It's bonkers and we love it. One in a hundred, one in a thousand, who knows? But once in a while, out of all the people buying Land Rover's vehicles, there will be someone who has the intention of using it to the maximum. For the other 99 or 999, not so. The firm's entire success has been founded on making vehicles that are so capable they go well beyond the normal needs of the buyers. The Defender is the pinnacle of that. Who are the one in a thousand? A few adventure crews. Some deep country folk of unusual prosperity. And, with the commercial version, such noble entities as coast guards, electricity supply workers and rescue crews. But the new Defender, particularly the 110, also exceeds as a family car with a deep and wide backstory. It just makes you feel adventurous. And when you do use its ability, as an off-roader, a snow eroder, a towing roader, it'd feel immensely reassuring. It'll carry mountains of kit, and shrug off the dirt and wet. Or, if you bought the V8 110, it'll swallow all of your belongings and children, then fire them cross-country with great pace and drama. Those same qualities of versatility and ruggedness are equally handy even if you just take a bunch of unruly kids to school, the shops, the sports ground. Families wreck the insides of posh cars. This one resists wrecking. And the amazing thing is how well it drives. It's stately and dignified and feels good. We usually recommend 4WD estate cars over expensive crossovers, because there's not much a crossover can do that an estate can't. But the Defender isn't a crossover and skittles that argument. If you can make use of it, there's nothing to match it. The most amazing thing about the Defender is it doesn't feel like a hardcore off-roader. Not when it's on the road. There's none of the Jimny's unruliness, the Wrangler's vagueness, the Land Cruiser's queasiness. Axles don't shudder on the mountings and the body doesn't quake on the chassis. Everything feels tied together. Because of the long suspension travel with its adaptive settings, it's soft and gentle in its reactions. 
which is very different from the forced urgency of sporty SUVs, and much more honest and real word sensible, really. It absorbs hard shocks, and the wheels don't shudder over corrugated surfaces. More remarkable, provided you drive smoothly, is its fine control of pitch and roll heave. And you can drive smoothly because the electronic power steering is progressive. So you can whisk it along a difficult road at a respectable lick and remarkable comfort. Almost luxury car comfort. No really. Go for the P525V8, though, and noise and drama are very much your friend. The chassis and suspension are also toughened up to deal with 518 brake horsepower and the weight of said engine, while 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds, 4.9 for the 90, isn't bad for something with the aerodynamic properties of a 1960s tower block. There are many, but the first thing to note is that all come equipped with JLR Smooth 8-speed auto gearbox, with a twin-speed transfer box for low-range ratios, and all, of course, are driven by all four wheels at all times. The six-cylinder diesel engines are stoutly up to the job. All are equipped with mild hybrid tech too, 